Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula here in the studio for the second time. But in the next couple weeks, we'll be starting to go live, and I still haven't figured out exactly how I was going to do that. But I'm going to do it anyways, starting on uh, June 9th or something like that. We'll see. Uh, I'm getting the dates mixed up. But currently today is uh, May 28th. Um, not to be confused with the day I'm taping this, which was the 27th, which also brings me to the story between Israel and Hamas. Uh, so last uh, 11 days or so before last Thursday, uh, there was finally a ceasefire to the ongoing uh, struggle between the two uh, sides living in the same region. Uh, it's very much like uh, an Arab state that was taken over by... Uh, 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 Jewish settlers, uh, otherwise known as the Zionists, um, and you know, just a little bit of background. It's an occupying state in a uh, already established a country, and so tensions weren't that great. Imagine you living in a home, and then they just, uh, the, the UN, the United Nations, decide to be like, "Hey, you know, these people, are, these refugees are coming in, and they need a country." And so they went there, had a country, and then there was a lot of conflicts between the two countries, which have has never been truly addressed. Uh, there was an attempt to address it in the 90s, but resulted in a uh, what's it called? A, an assassination of the uh, Palestine's leader at that time. Uh, let's see. And so far, uh, the Israel military say that it was a very, uh, uh, what's that called, a very, uh, uh, various military victories in the region, along with Gaza, who also uh, claims victory and marched in the street after the ceasefire. Uh, most of this started because tensions in the regions have always kind of existed. Uh, power in 2021 has been interesting in a lot of countries in terms of power struggles and whatnot. New Zealand is now on uh, on track to being very similar to what happened with the uh, January 6th incidents in here in America. Uh, the, one of the first elected Samoan um, prime ministers of in New Zealand was Fiam Naomi Matafa Afa. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but... Uh, they tr uh, that day that she was supposed to be sworn in uh, was the day that they locked her out of the uh, congressional building. So they swore her. Uh, uh, so they swore her in under a tent just outside the building, and the uh, outgoing powers, of course, did not recognize that as uh, an official swearing in. Uh, so uh, Tupila uh, Cellini, uh who worked as prime minister for 22 years, has support from the head of state. Uh, Suleivili II uh, wrote a proclamation last week that he was suspending Parliament uh, for reasons that will be made known in due course. Um, Fiamme uh, had a press conference to talk about what happened and commented on the situation. There will be time when we will meet again inside the House. Let it, let's leave it to the law. Among other countries, Myanmar is one of those other countries that uh, had... Uh, an election, and the military and former leader uh, considered a uh, a fraudulent election and decided to put a military coup uh, in February. And recently, the uh, uh, elected official Aung San uh, Aung San Suu Kyi has made her first appearance uh, since the coup uh, since February. And so far, she's been touted in a sham trial, looking to make anything stick. To discredit her, part of that has to gr do with a government secrets that she allegedly exposed. Mind you, that she never was actually in office long enough for her to get any 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 information in regards to the military. According to Myanmar's Assistant Association for Political Prisoners, which has been keeping a detailed tally of arrests and deaths since the coup, almost 4,300 people are in detention, with 95 who have already been sentenced, and these are the protesters who protested the military coup. Moving on, the 31st. Oh, actually. Before I jump into uh, this next part, I did want to mention in an, another international story is that Joe Biden is now looking into possible lab leak theories. He said that they have about 90 days to do their research and China uh, into China's Wuhan Institute of Virology. And so they're going to look into more details about that. And uh, the counter uh, for the Chinese, how they reacted, is now they are wanting to investigate the virus here in America uh, about its origins here. So that's kind of what's happening there. Uh, that's kind of the wheels moving. It's an ongoing story. Uh, 
also it's Memorial Day weekend. There's a lot going on. Uh, we're uh, there's no city council on the following Monday, so I won't be talking about the city council report that week. But one of the big things that happened on May 31st, uh, which marks 100 years since the Tulsa massacre in Oklahoma. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about because for most history, that was kind of uh, underplayed and kind of hopefully to be erased. Uh, there, I there are even some incidents of local schools in Tulsa not even teaching about the uh, Tulsa massacre uh, and... Only, uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, just a little bit of background. Tulsa, uh, the, especially the Greenwood District, was known as the, uh, the Black Wall Street uh, of that time. Uh, black communities lived there, thrived very well. And then uh, on the 31st in 1921, Tulsa was hit with a mob of white people, backed by the local uh, police department, uh, started burning down buildings. They had airstrikes uh, through uh, planes, and uh, so far, the death toll was about 300 people with 800 admitted into hospitals and over 10,000 of people were left without a home. Um, just this week, a 170-year-old survivor of the Tulsa massacre uh, did a uh, came, um, spoke in front of Congress during a subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights, and Civil Liberties. Viola Fletcher, who at the time was seven, uh, she just celebrated her seventh birthday uh, uh, a week a week or so before the Tulsa massacre, a powerful moment reflecting a major events that still haunts her to this day. Um, it, it, this, it it's crazy. It's it's definitely uh, what's happening there. But let's talk about what's happening in Montana. And uh, one of the big things is the concealed concealed carry arm and uh, bolstering of the Second Amendment in the state of Montana. Montana and their guns. I'm not going to get into the politics between this and that. But the, the, uh, the, the actual fact that's going on right now is that the border regents, the ones who control the university state system in the state of Montana, are deciding to sue Gianforte uh, for uh, these... Uh, for some of these gun laws that as of June 1st would basically, uh, in the Montana's new law, would basically allow people to have concealed carry arms on campuses. So what they want to do is they want to suspend this uh, this law long enough where they can figure out how to go to the Montana Supreme Court as well. And many of the stopgats that are happening right now is that the Montana Supreme Court now has, uh, now that Gianforte has the power to uh, stack the courts in the state of Montana when he uh, decided to uh, repeal the uh, committee that has been, uh, for the last 50 years, been um, uh, basically appointing um, Montana judges and also um, I'll talk a little bit more about how Missoula is reacting to the municipal court judge elections, which is a new law, which originally was an appointment process, which became an election process. So anyways, the border regents are going to uh, uh, go on the attack for House Bill 112, the uh, transgender and sports bill, the House Bill 319, which bans political groups from uh, conducting voter registration, uh, much like uh, organizations like Montperg at the University of Montana, House Bill 349, which creates a new guideline for free speech and anti-harassment policies on state campuses, the new law to protect the use of guns on campuses goes into effect on June 1st, but the Board of Regents wants to block that as soon as possible, or at least delay it until the Montana Supreme Court decides uh, on the matter. Um, and so far, there's always been a gun ban on most campuses, and they've been using this for 30 years. And it's a, it's definitely an interesting new thing as well. Um, let's see. I don't want to get into that. Let's skip that. Okay, so my my takeaway from this is very simple, um, from these stories and like the laws and the policies and every place has their own kind of deal when it comes to uh, uh, how they w uh, want to prevent any kind of disruption with the school curriculum. And uh, all I can really say is being a good guest. You know, you're a guest on a lot of these places' properties. Yes, you feel like it, when you're in a public place, you want to hold a, you want to be able to protect yourself, but. Uh, rest assured, uh, you should always respect the house rules, uh, the host, the one who invites you into their home, and they're just like, hey, man, like, as long as you're here, please don't have this, this, and this. So that's just kind of like the whole idea. And, and like I, I've been saying the last couple of weeks, in Montana, we uh, know how to be good stewards of the land and of, of, the, of the place that we are. So one of the biggest things is that we got to leave the place better then we found it. So that kind of concludes my uh, news report. 
up next, we have an interview. Yes, I did interview a, a special guest, and he's from the Missoula City Band. Here is my interview with Sir Gary Gillette. Hey, guys, blast from the past, or should I say a little bit of a future telling from our old uh, <laughs> uh, friend from the Missoula City Band, Gary Gillette. We're back. Wait, what's that from? <laughs> Yo, that, that's a quote I want to I wanna use, uh, that uh, finally yesterday, uh, the, the, the person who really runs the band, Amanda Tish, yes. you, uh, uh, we finally uh, decided that uh, we needed, we needed uh, to make the commitment. Yep. And we've been him and hawing and yinging and yanging and looking at everything and, and uh, finally decided that we're going to put the band back yep. together. That it's all, regardless of what we do, we, we're always so tentative about it, afraid to make the call because we don't. We want to include everybody, but we don't want to. We don't want to freak people right. out. They go, oh, it's so much about individual choice now. Anyway, yeah. so the government finally said, "Have at it." Yep, have at it. As of course you're seeing from our perspective, is that we're not wearing our masks. We just took it off. You but, know. I like I like I got an email from Amanda about the city band because I do also play in the city band as a yeah, trombone player, but less about me. <laughs> but from the email, I did notice that there are some just being like, just be careful, be cool. Be courteous, yep. and if you are worried, uh, you can stay home, and you can always watch it on MCAT much later. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So we're trying to be inclusive and, and cut slack to people, uh, not bring pressure one way or another, except trying to model. And now, you know, that, that can be a real stretch for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm practicing my good behavior, and I've been wearing the mask all the time, and uh, navigating a summer's worth of city band last year under very yep. strange circumstances. And I, I managed to go to a couple of performances in person, and I was like, oh, okay. There was a good amount of people there. I was really impressed. There was a lot of support from the community here in Missoula for they were the just, city band. That's right. I won't miss having to go out every Wednesday at noon with this old-fashioned line painter that I borrowed from my buddies on the field crew at, uh, at some high school. Oh. And uh, painted painted a grid on right. the. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, it was good exercise, I guess. But uh, yeah, uh, it was a good time for a lot of people to pick <laughs> up some new skills and pick up some um, new things. And you can also pick up uh, your old instrument, maybe even join the city band. Nice segue, buddy, because we know that that we're going to be smaller. Last year we were a third of the size that we normally are. We're opening it back up, and some fo some folks still won't be comfortable in uh, returning to an ensemble. We took all the, all the necessary precautions and then beyond, you know, that we're always outside and that uh, we kept a six foot distance yeah. and the masking and all that. And, uh, uh, and, and the fact yeah. that we were successful at it, that we didn't have uh, any, anyone pointing their fingers going, look at what happened out there because we were the only game in town. We were the, yeah. we were the only I mean, ones that, that went it, through the hoops. Yeah, like you guys went through the ringer, you contacted the health department, you're like, can we do this? And I was like, well, you got to blah, 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 oh, no, all those rules, because it was the way to be able to provide a safe environment for a lot of the people here in the city of Missoula, because they were fighting two battles. Oh, it was on, so difficult. So many difficult. And it, it didn't, to let people make up their own mind. Once we said, I think we can do this, then we had to find out, can we play being six feet apart? Because that's not what... That's not what bands do. So we're looking for players again yep. of folks that are comfortable and, and, and joining us. And everything is outside. Years. We got to talk some details about some of the folks there out there go. who are interested in being in the city bands. Uh, what is uh, the prereq? Or, co or coming to. So if, you, uh, uh, you know, if you're an accomplished player on some level, there's no auditions to be a player in the band. Uh, you should be a decent player is what it should be because we do a lot of reading. And on every single concert, we read something, something that we haven't had a chance to rehearse. And things move along quickly uh, in rehearsal, especially outside now. Uh, uh, but it's open to every adult. So as I've, I've made some uh, introductions and uh, invitations to advanced students, mm -hmm. uh, but it's open to all adults and we rehearse and play in the same place, which is the Bonner Park Band yeah. Shell. And it's uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on nine Mondays. Rehearsal. One rehearsal free, which is the 14th. Yep. And then the big band will come in and play that Wednesday. And you're in that band. I am in that band. Well, I know. I just stand in front. <laughs>
and also your son is also in the yeah, big bands. Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah, a lot of the uh, musician heavy hitters are usually the ones for the big band preseason special. Yeah, so yeah. You want to see are. some of the big hitters? Yeah, that, we, we don't need as, no. as much rehearsal. Well, again, you, Do you know, got old got Tom Benson singing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Candy Johnson. Oh, will Candy be singing. Johnson. That's yes. Right. Uh, uh, and then and then we have rehearsals every Monday from seven to nine, okay. and then the gigs are on Wednesday. Eight to nine. Yep. And I believe kind that of. there's eight or nine shows you guys do every oh, year. Oh, man, I tell you, Scotty, uh, you're keeping me on uh, it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight concerts, you know, along with a special one. And indeed, Tuba Christmas in July is wow. coming back to Missoula on uh, Sunday, July 11th. It's a, um, a regional tuba festival, nice. and uh, we piggyback and play a Sunday concert, and I make everyone promise to come to the concert or I'm gonna hold the city band from them for the next week. <laughs> and we're at everything at Bonner Park, so uh, I have to be now concerned about the weather two days a week. Yep. I got, uh, and, uh, but the, it rained one on one rehearsal last year, and really the only person gets wet is me. Oh, so uh, I have a little raincoat that I'll uh, that I <laughs> that just I put up, and you're just like you're sitting there, just doing your thing. Nobody can see your face. That's right. No one. Yeah. Can. But I get to take the mask off this year. Good Lord, I had a, a face shield last year. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Bumbling and bumbling with that you know, thing. I'm like, hey, as long as people can see your face and not feel your spit, I think <laughs> they'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I, I I found out how much how much uh, I communicate through my face. And I didn't realize that because at the first concert I played with just a mask on. Oh, oh. man! Yeah. So, so many people depend on like <gasps> those cues, like cues that. and the, you know the no. See, I, no! <laughs> for myself, I'm more of a selfish musician, so I just like I listen to like certain things and just fit in. Sure, sure. You play it, and I'm so like my glued. Like my eyes don't blink. I need somebody like constantly. <laughs> spray eye drop it's in my <laughs> eyes because I don't know how to blink. And you're afraid that if you take your eye off the page, you lose how it. are you going to find your place back? Yeah, that's why I have to run my finger over a book when I read. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of tough to do with a uh, trombone. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we, we talked to your guys' head off long enough. I think I'll so. edit it down just to <laughs> get the points across and make Thank some you. fun and banter. And before the library police get here, I've got to go. I've got to get down to the union. Yep. All right. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Hey guys, we're right back here with my face talking about some movies that are coming out this weekend. And yes, there's a couple of movies. It kind of feels like it's like uh, pre-pandemic days where they have a couple big movies that are coming out this weekend. And now it's my time to convince you not to go see these movies. Let's kick things off with Cruella. Disney's attempt at basically taking every villain in their franchise and, give it, and humanizing them so you don't hate them. No simple plot of... Person good, person bad, don't think about it too much. Now we're going to think about it a little even more with a Devil Wears Prada-esque at caper starring Emma Stone as the titular Cruella. Hey, I need uh, uh, <laughs> Glenn Close. Justice for Glenn, Cl Glenn, Glenn Close. That's all I got to say. We dive into yet another story about a girl uh, who works at a fashion designer only to discover that her boss is using her uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure that's kind of how it is. And then she has to kind of turn the tables on her, and uh, the story is about how Cruella gets justice by becoming the very thing that she hates and frankly has to do end on top before the group of Dalmatians foils her. So it's basically her versus another fashionista, and she probably wins because, you know, you have to lead into her being a fairly in-charge person who uh, allegedly employs, uh, I don't know, the human the, the human mother, the, gr the, the girl who meets the guy, I, I don't know. I I. I yeah. Anyways, just expect it to be like, burr, 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 burr. I'm Cruella. The end. Um, <laughs> this, this next uh, movie honestly should have been called The Quieter Place, or A Quieter Place, A Quiet Place Part 2. Much like a book, it's taking liberty into uh, diving into the deep, kind of like being the uh, Godfather Part 2, where you kind of start off in the past, but also in the future, and then have uh, correlating things. Hey, I'm, I'm going to call it right now. Um, spoiler or not, I have not seen this movie. I'm pretty sure that Emily Blunt, the mother character in this movie, dies, and then the kids have to figure out how to survive anyway. It's a kind of allegory. It's where, like, the youth shall inherit the world, and we should let them, and we're going to do everything we can to protect them. And that's kind of like the, the theme of this, book, this movie. So director and former dad of the group, Jim from The Office, uh, 
uh, to survive yet another apocalypse, but this time people, uh, people suck too. Um, <laughs> that seems to be a rule in monster movies or post-apocalyptic movie where the first one is you establish the horror and then the next movie you establish that uh, it was the humans that were the real horrible people the whole time. Um, I'm making this up, but it looks like most of the film's trailer was all about flashbacks and you can see Jim from The Office gets to come back and, oh, wow, we may have a, we may have to, um, and he'll be like, wow, we may have to be quiet to survive. Up next, <laughs> wow, that was long. But anyways, endangered species. Um, only through the power of white rich family can they protect them African animals, animals from poachers and folks who use their animals to make a quick buck. Don't steal food from a person's mouth will be used in the story about a family just wanting to have an African adventure. Tigers, lions, and bears, maybe not bears, oh my. It's all, also being tagged as an action adventure way over their heads kind of film i'm assuming the family will have uh, annoying habits that will help them in the long run and there might be like a uh, a, a cool kind of protector for them who sacrifices themselves at the end by being like i care now i care hence the movie endangered species uh, this next one is a video game it's uh, called king of thieves actually no it's king of seas so uh, don't be confused with Sea of Thieves. This isn't Sea of Thieves, folks. It's totally different. Uh, you sail around the ocean, not like Sea of Thieves. Um, <laughs> you battle with pirates, not like Sea of Thieves. Um, and you go on an adventure in a kind of a sandbox world in a, in a pirate ship, not like Sea of Thieves. This is Sea of Ki uh, King of Seas. Uh, this is still about being a king and sailing around the seas with a boat and finding other ships. Like I said again, this is not Sea of Thieves. But let me tell you something. The title... Is different, and that should be good enough for you to spill out a whole bunch of money on this stupid game. Or I think it's like a mobile iOS game where you just keep playing, and they have like addictive things to it. So it's like uh, pay to play. Anyways, that does it for your guys' pre-critic. Up next, we're gonna have some city council. But first, we have a Tarzan movie. Uh, uh, it's called Tarzan and uh, the Trappers from 1958. Psst. Good. I'm here to save you. Don't worry. Just stay there. I'm gonna get you. A sneak, sneak, sneak. A sneak, sneak, sneak. I'm sneaking. I'm sneaking. I'm sneaking. Oh, a net. Oh, it's my kryptonite. Oh. <laughs> I didn't sign up to be the new Jane. Tarzan, you need to save yourself. I come all this way. Uh, you don't want saving? Uh, What's wrong with you? Get him. Come on, tie him up. But the net is doing just fine. All right, all right. <laughs> so, Tarzan, looks like you're trapped in the trap. You know I could break you at any time. Oh, yes. But did you know that we have your friend? And if you do anything funny, we're going to kill him and make him dress up like he shouldn't be dressed up. Something that he doesn't like to be dressed all up. Right, all right, all really right. Let's uh, calm down, guys. Let's figure out exactly what's going on. We are sneaking, <laughs> sneaking, sneaking. Well, 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 Tarzan. Looks like you fell into our trap. Is there anything you'd like to say on your behalf? Uh, how can you expect an ape man uh -huh. to understand <laughs> what we're trying to accomplish here? We're just trying to steal and take all the we resources. We got these uh, resources, but you take, and you just take. Well, what do you expect from one-dimensional villains? Well, I gotta say, at least I'm two-dimensional. Why is that most protagonists are not that interesting? I mean, come on, guys, I'm serious. He... You know, he's in most movies, and he just does the same thing. He rescues a damsel, and then the people are jealous and try to kill him. <laughs> Here's your mob fire. <laughs> All right, Tarzan, I'm 100% sure you're going to get... <laughs> One, two, three, skidoo. Oh, no, Tarzan's free. <laughs> Why didn't we see <laughs> this coming, Jesus? <laughs> now I hatch ultimate plan. <laughs> Hurry, yeah. get him. Take this. Guys, come on. I, I can't do this I by cut myself. You free. You are new Jane. Oh, please, we no. Go off together. Uh, will someone stop turning? I got a gun, but I'm not using it right. Off to force with us. Let's get out of here. 
I knew I had a dream about this. Oh, jeez. Now we've got the colonialists on their ropes. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll know how to use guns at some point. They're not as dumb oh. as we thought they were. Let's get out of here. Oh, Tarzan, take you away now. Oh, please don't! Shut up! Hey, welcome back. Let's talk about a little bit about City Council. We're kicking things off for the big day for the city this week where they finalized rules on local uh, municipal judges and how they will be elected in the next cycle. So it's going to be, tr so they expanded some more money, about 50000 more dollars for the municipal courts. Um, don't quote me on that, uh, but the, the, they put some more money into it, and so through the election they're going to be able to have uh, three sitting judges, and the chief judge, uh, according to the new state uh, law, it's the, the chief judge is the one who uh, gets the most votes. So they're trying to figure out exactly how they're going to do this, because so far the city council has been uh, appointing judges, but now with the election cycle, the city doesn't have too much control on who is the judge. Kicking us off, Josh Decker during public comment talks about Western Montana Mental Health Center's property as the city moves to acquire. I would like to, you know, implore the city to have permanently affordable housing available with no sunset date um, and work towards that in future projects so that uh, we as constituents aren't necessarily responsible for budget holes um, that Western Montana Mental Health Center potentially could have avoided. Um, I, again, I, what I want you to hear first and foremost is thank you for decisive action on acquiring the property. And uh, I appreciate council's work to that end. This next one is uh, part of a proclamation. There was no proclamation read, but they were talking about uh, a National Gun Violence Awareness Day on June 4th. And John Engen talks a little bit about uh, this June 1st new law that's going to be put in place when it comes to concealed carry arms and stronger uh, laws protecting the Second Amendment in the state of Montana. And this is what he had to say. As uh, this council is uh, very aware, um, we have concern about illegal guns and uh, and their use, um, and we don't need to do much other than read the headlines daily to recognize that we have a problem in this country. And this uh, proclamation acknowledges that and asks uh, uh, residents to think about that and act appropriately. And just so some of you know, like I, I did talk a little bit about this in the news, but uh, just a little bit more background, Montana residents will soon have the right to carry concealed uh, firearms without a permit per House Bill 102. So far, like I mentioned in the news, uh, border regions are suing the governor on uh, grounds of campus safety at universities. So far, there there is nothing we can do as a local government because uh, can like uh, so as long as you're a Montana resident, you can c carry a concealed carry arm without a permit. Uh, let's see here, Montana resident. So. Uh, there is no actual federal law, uh, but Montana resident uh, da, 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 federal buildings are not are a no go and have been for some time. Uh, Janet uh, Badness with Moms Demand Action, formerly known as Moms Against Drunk Driving, had this to say. But I've been doing this work for many years now, and you have to ask how it's stored because I've talked to plenty of people that tell me a loaded pistol in the top of the closet is a secured firearm. R in SMART is recognizing that an unsecured gun is a risk for youth suicide. And T is telling everyone what you've learned today. So far this year in the U.S., 93 kids have gained access to a firearm and shot themselves or others. The uh, badness goes on to uh, talk about national statistics and how Folks are three times as likely to commit suicide if there is a gun in their home. The hunter safety uh, treat, like uh, like I learned in hunter safety, treat all guns like they're loaded and uh, make sure that they are stored in a safe place out of reach of children and strangers alike. If you want to uh, support Moms Demand Action, wear orange on June 4th for National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Moving on, the city talks about the third quarter 2021 
uh, budget, and this has to do with the fact that uh, new grants, new money for sources coming in, and they have to do some updates to changes to the budget. And this is Lily Griffin with the city and talks about these changes. The city, but we're doing some accounting cleanup, and we bring these forward as an informational item. So in case somebody goes back and looks at the original budget and then the final budget and they see a difference, it's usually accounting for some of these budget transfers and making sure that the budgets are in the appropriate funds and appropriate departments. And the reason I bring uh, this particular part up is that I've been hearing a lot of comments uh, from uh, citizens really worried about how the money works. And there's a lot of uh, moving parts. There's always grants application processes. And it's good that they're actually uh, amending a lot of the budget during the, during the year so they can reflect the money that's coming in with the money that's going out and the transfers and pays and then any kind of incidentals that may occur later on. The rest of this meeting was devoted to subdivisions and parts of Missoula being looked at for development that reflects the new zoning in areas like Teddy Turn up the Rattlesnake Duncan Drive, if you want to be more specific. Uh, also, uh, the whole uh, Wyoming Street, there's a whole big development that's happening up there. If you've driven down Wyoming Street, you know that there's a good chunk of buildings that are being built. But now they're doing a whole new phase system where in phase one and phase two they're going to be building out into Silver Park, really developing the area for a lot of this infill uh, gentrification kind of type stuff. Okay, so Ryan Salisbury talks about what you can see uh, in this area. And an idea of what the units are modeled to look like. And actually, this is really accurate as to what is proposed here. MMW Architects has been working closely with a builder and a developer uh, to create these sketch-ups and uh, anticipating building permits submittal as soon as we could get the amended plat filed. This is uh, Old Mill Road over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Got a couple screens going on here. Old Mill Road is here, and this is Wyoming Street. And then another view. Uh, this is the sidewalk adjacent to the common area green space. And again, this is Wyoming Street and the proposed units on the corner of the common area green space in Wyoming. I believe he is with WGM Group, but I'm not going to get into too much of this because it is ongoing. And then so far, this is phase one. They're doing a lot of planning, but they plan to kind of make this a kind of a diverse uh, infill kind of a high uh, unit complex development as well. And so far, uh, phase three with Silver Park being later, uh, so far uh, $580,000 are going towards the infrastructure between 2021 and 2022. So two years, that uh, that one budget. Um, also, development costs in materials have gone up with the demand of the market. There seems to be a really high demand in development, and uh, the people who are uh, have the raw materials are seeing the demand and are taking advantage of hiking up the prices, which is not uncommon for uh, demand and uh, dealing with the supply. But Missoula is also getting grants through the uh, through de urban development and uh, also uh, the home grant. Uh, uh, it's called the Community Development Block Grant, and so far the kind of the sum total is uh, around nine hundred and like sixty thousand dollars, and this is going towards affordable housing, uh, monies for cities, uh, real estate acquisition, relocation, demolition, rehab rehabilitation of housing, commercial buildings, and of course infrastructure too. So far, the presentation is by Kendra Laysom, uh is all about funding ideas through these grants. Home is uh, geared more towards affordable housing, Kendra talks about the reaction from the public. And a majority agreed that Missoula faces two major housing challenges, a lack of affordable homes to buy and a lack of affordable homes to rent. Um, survey takers identified from a list of housing initiatives, which they would prioritize for the city as a whole. And this list was based on the type of initiatives that we can fund with our CDBG and home funds. Um, and then the creation and preservation of affordable housing and housing assistance are routinely some of the most supported efforts which can, can, bear, can be carried out with these federal funds. Federal programs aside, affordable housing is something that is needed, especially in Missoula, which doesn't have too many options for careers that don't cater to the service industry. There are a lot of uh, barriers when it comes to buying a home. So far, 350 suffer from some form of hom homelessness in the city of Missoula, and making it more difficult is the landlords that I've heard, uh, just anecdotally, is that uh, 
they've had a tendency to uh, raise a lot of the rates of rent, um, even regardless of the lease agreement. So one of the things you guys should know if you are a renter is that they should not raise the rent on you unless there is a new lease agreement. So it's a fixed, it should be always a fixed uh, rent for the six month lease that you did sign up for. And then starting in the new lease with the new contract, that is when they should negotiate for a higher price. And you guys are more than willing to negotiate with them as well, but just know your renter's rights. So them doing it kind of in the middle of your lease is not kind of good and you can uh, contest that as well. So word of the wise, the property owner uh, can raise the rates, but you do have the right to uh, a protest. All right. You only have enough rights until you volunteer them away. Uh, the Trinity Navigation Center is one of those funding areas where they hope to work with families and citizens to find housing in Missoula. They want this to be kind of like the hub, the information center for people coming to Missoula and trying to find a place to live. Uh, transient folks, uh, folks uh, dealing with uh, uh, being evicted and stuff like that. So this Trinity, uh, Trinity Navigation Center is going to be geared towards helping people find housing and a lot of programs programs are going to be housed in that area as well. So Karen uh, Gasvold uh, talks more about this site. The center will be located at the Trinity Mullins site to provide access to supportive services. The Mullins site will also have low threshold homes, 30 of which will be supportive housing for Missoula's long-term unhoused neighbors and 100 homes for individuals and families living below 70% of the area median income. So the Pavarel Center, Habitat for Humanities, and YM YWCA's new building is uh, aiming to receive some of the funds through the HOME and the CB, uh, the, the uh, Community Block Grant. And so far, this was informational only as they look to move funds to these programs. And so they're just going to move forward and uh, they're going to see how far this goes. And so that was the presentation. And right now that the city is looking to appoint three brand new judges th through the municipal court judge system that you will get to vote for from now on. The pre the new Montana state law passed recently in the uh, legislature, the city has to update the ordinance in this manner. Julie Merritt talks about programs in place that will the city hopes new judges uh, will continue. I do think it's important that our elected municipal judges um, consider the jail diversion master plan when they are um, making their decisions and approaching how how they do business. It's it's a policy that's adopted by the city and the county, and it's important that they consider that. So I am looking forward to having some of uh, these three new judges elected, and I hope that they will bring with them some of the uh, innovative concepts that have been discussed in some of the public comment that we received. I think that we can do better when we know better, and we have that opportunity now. The jail diversion pl program is a very important program into keeping people out of the prisons. And so far the city opened the uh, budget to uh, be able to fund three judges, and I heard last meeting, uh, you can double check in my last meetings, I believe it was around $50,000, but don't quote me on that. Uh, Amber Sherrill the city from the city council talks about the uh, amplified sound ordinance for parks. Um, so one of the things, just a little bit of background, is that uh, people, uh, they were trying to close a couple loopholes when it comes to amplified sound in city parks, in which you would have to get a permit to set up like an amp PA system and whatnot. And so one of the uh, complaints was, was like, hey, what if I just had a boom box or a Bluetooth speaker, to be more specific, and they wanted to just like kind of jam out and just hang out with their friends, play some volleyball at Kiwanis Park. And, you know, they were worried about that. And so what they did is they kind of slowly kind of mitigated uh, some of the rules in terms of, of uh, amplified sounds, but at the same time, uh, respecting the rules of the noise ordinance, which supersedes a lot of this amplification permit as well. So uh, the whole idea is that through this permit, they want to prevent any kind of uh, cops being called on you. So if you got permitted and did everything right, people are just like, oh, that music's so annoying, I'm going to call the police. It's like, sorry, man, they're permitted, and, they're about, and uh, they can only play until about 10 o'clock or so. And that's kind of what they this permit would allow for uh, more structured uh, loudness in parks. So anyways, uh, here's Amber Sherrill with the city council talking about the amplified sound. And anyone that's following it, 
um, will this ordinance will recognize this has been in committee. It's been in uh, city council. Um, we have been working on this for the last few weeks. I appreciate the Montana um, Area Musicians Association. MAMA, um, they, uh, the, their executive director, along with their board members, have helped uh, really work on this ordinance and make it something I think that um, really works for the community and improves the ordinance. And uh, Shirley Kinsey with the Parks Department has been great, uh, as well as um, my colleague, Julie Merritt, which I think um, improved this. So I am hoping everyone will support this. We have, have spent our time making sure that it is a good ordinance and, and making sure it was done collaboratively. So down the line, the city moved to approve uh, nine to two uh, minus one uh, vote that wasn't there. And they just wanted to help clarify some of the, uh, um, the language that are in the ordinance and that uh, helps reflect the, also the noise ordinance as well. Um, one example is uh, when the Osprey play, play in the field, they get permitted to launch fireworks off at, at the end of a game. So the loud popping and stuff like that has been permitted through the city of Missoula. Um, let's see. All right, that pretty much does it for the city council part, but I did want to talk about Community of the Whole because one of the biggest things that are happening in the city of Missoula is the mental health crisis unit. And part of the mental health crisis unit is geared towards helping uh, people going through a mental health crisis. Maybe someone's having a mental breakdown in public and the police aren't uh, de-escalating this as much as they could and, and the p people are not getting the support that they may need. And here is Matt Larson, who is critic who is cr uh, critiquing the city's uh, mental health crisis unit. I, I observed a response from the uh, crisis intervention team last week um, at Butterfly Herbs. Um, a friend of mine that I know decently well was going through an issue with and had the cops called on him by his parents. And his parents actually called the mental health crisis team initially, but the police, the MPD showed up. And MPD proceeded to follow this man down the street. One of the new officers, Officer Gway, was in his cruiser with his lights on following this guy down the street before the mental health crisis team arrived. Um, I also followed and around Bigga Pizza, um, I, I saw my friend turn around and he didn't want to talk to his parents. He didn't want to talk to the cops. He didn't want to talk to the mental health crisis team. But he wanted to talk to me and I walked him around. Um, and then took him back to uh, Butterfly Herbs, where the police again tried to aggress the situation by walking. And so far, uh, this whole meeting was actually devoted to hiring more full-time staff to be available for uh, helping individuals. But at the same time, one of the biggest things they want to make sure is that the police, um, the any kind of misconception that you have about the mobile crisis unit is that the police always have to show up. They have to assess the situation and make sure it's safe for the people in the mental, uh, the, the mental health crisis unit to help these people. Because a lot of times you never know what, the, uh, what kind of incidents may or may not occur. And it is a safety reason to protect the mobile crisis unit. That is primarily the main reason why the police have to show up. Um, you can call, uh, the whole idea is that you call the police and it's like, hey, someone's having a mental health crisis. And then they always uh, bring the police. And uh, from what Matt Larson was talking about as well, yes, there might have been some um, uh, miscommunications um, along the uh, along the lines between the police and him and his friends. Uh, so far, the city is actually moving towards a more uh, uh, permanent structure, so they can have support uh, for the during of the mental health crisis and after to touch base with some of those folks as well. So Teresa Williams was hired in part with the grants and county to fulfill the role as the program manager for the crisis unit. And this is what she had to say in terms of talking about the uh, crisis intervention team program. CIT program is an evidence-based program. We ascribe to um, CIT International. They have a best practices manual. And so it really provides that foundation to promote community and statewide solutions. Um, it also reduces stigma and I'll get to that momentarily. And again, it's the goal is to deflect people from entering the criminal justice system um, who would be better served in another um, in another situation to treat any mental health conditions. Um, in CIT, we're coming together as, as a team and we're working to problem solve um, folks that are 
going through that system. We're working, we're working to figure out how do we divert people. And we're also working if there are any situations where we could improve as providers between our agencies, whether that's law enforcement to the hospital, mobile support team to the hospital, um, partners um, that are providing mental health services. We all know that there are things that we can do to be better as first responders, as community members, as neighbors. Um, and so that's really what the CIT is, is working, um, working to do. So the CIT program uh, tries to find uh, solutions with folks who, by the loose definition of a mental health crisis, can resolve and get follow-up support. So far, this is not solely the crisis unit, but other cities developed this in 1987 to do additional training for officers and whatnot. And in 2007, in Missoula, but wasn't so much as a unit as a program for educational purposes only. Since 2016, the state of Montana created a framework to tackle the mental health response I've seen some good work being done on the serve the serve the part uh, serve on the serve part and serve and protect in our police department. Sorry, I I, I worded that really weird, but yeah. Anyways, uh, so Teresa also talks about some of the misconceptions. Recovery is possible. It is a journey. It does look different for every single person. Um, but one of the biggest barriers to people getting help and accessing help is stigma. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and that's why I am bringing it to everyone's attention today in this presentation, because it's so important. It's not just for those folks that are on duty, off duty. Um, we all have to take care of ourselves and our neighbors. And she wasn't necessarily addressing uh, some of the mental health crises that, that were involved with COVID-19. There are a lot of stressors in COVID-19 with people being uh, threatened with eviction. Uh, that's just added to stresses and everything like that doesn't really help. The inequality between homeowners and the renters just seems to get wider. And I shouldn't change the subject, but these are realistic stressors in the city of Missoula during these last uh, 14 plus months. The presentation was very clear when it came to working with the folks who were put in jail just to be sent to an asylum, Warm Springs. In 2020, nine inmates were taken there. And so far in 2021, they also matched the 2022 with uh, nine people being uh, admitted into Warm Springs uh, Mental Hospital. The takeaway from this meeting was the need for more hands-on approach with more support for case managers to work with individuals who are having difficulty managing their lives with very little support. Right now, the solution is to learn to control the situation and not the person. Uh, for more information on these meetings and more, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. And that pretty much concludes my city council for you guys. I am running a little bit long, so I want to talk a little bit of the Memorial Day weekend stuff. So if you guys are interested in going out and doing some stuff, this weekend is going to be beautiful from what I've been hearing about the news. Warm 80 degree temperatures, keep on being teased, but this whole week's been rainy and crappy. So just be aware, keep your uh, eye to the sky and just kind of see that dealio. And if you want to know what's happening in Missoula, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Anyways, it is the end of bike month this weekend. And... A whole bunch of self-guided tours from the University of Montana and also the uh, Mountain Line uh, Transit Center. Uh, MCT is also doing their last show, uh, last streaming shows of Betty Lou and the Country Beast, which is all about uh, Beauty and the Beast turned on its head in a more, uh, uh, what's that called, a, c a county fair kind of setting. M uh, let's see, Paint Your Own Pottery Curbside Service, Zootown Arts Community Center, uh, serve, uh, Community Center is having kits where you can bring home clay do your thing and then you can bring it back to be put into the kiln and that starts and that's most days you can actually pick it up your diy project and you can find out more information at zootownarts.org sparks at home so spark is a uh, inverse uh, immersive program for the arts in school systems and so far arts missoula in, in conjunction with spark has created an awesome resource with uh Creativity at home with your family and is full of education online resources uh, from a lot of different art organizations. These resources are activities are designed for any families to enjoy during doing at home with uh, minimal uh, supplies. So no going to the store. If you have any arts and crafts at home resources, uh, resources, uh, let's say to add, they would love to hear about them. So you can uh, get in contact with them through uh, Spark. Mm hmm.
Missoula Public Library is doing a water painting class. This is for 18 and up. Uh, this is new painting lessons and assignments are posted every week Friday as assi uh, assignments are submitted via the internet. Feedback with support is provided. And this is through the Missoula Public Library. All right, so th for those of you who are interested in finding new trails in Missoula, you can uh, check out this next walking event, Rattlesnake Weekly Walks. Uh, this is at Pine View Park. This is up the Rattlesnake, uh, up, uh, I believe it was Duncan Drive, uh, or actually, no, if you go further up Rattlesnake, it's closer to the Peas Farm, and they have a couple parks there where they want, where they, uh, where it's a good place to meet, which is Pine View Park. I believe it's fairly close to uh, Rattlesnake Elementary. Um, so every Friday at 1 p.m., this whole deal is where they meet at the playground and, uh, and the tennis courts. The walk route is Pine View Park over the Footbridge, take the trail by the Peace Farm, loop around, and back to Pineview. So that's the walking tour, and they're going to be doing this uh, probably all summer long. Uh, Missoula Paddleheads is doing some baseball game at the uh, Oregon Phil uh, tonight uh, at 7 p.m. You guys could uh, enjoy some baseball. And it is also free beer night. Yes, you read that right. It's simple purchase and wear one of our I Love Free Beer t-shirts, and you receive free beers until the opponent scores a run. So... Yeah, that's the, that's the deal. <laughs> Missoula baseball is back, as they say. Uh, paint and sip moonlight shores. Uh, paint it with a twist. Uh, let's uh, vacation on the beach, or at least pretend for two hours in the studio. Painting with a twist is doing some painting. Comedy showcase the Giggle Box, uh, seven thirty to nine p.m. Another uh, intimate night of comedy with Montana's finest. Uh, uh, let's see, Meg Z, J. Ron, Catherine uh, Hosbean. Jeffany uh, Voicein, uh, Amy Lee uh, Smith, and Sarah Ashwell will be performing at the Giggle Box at 7.30. Rocking Karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon. And then your Saturday. Yes, we're jumping on to Saturday. Let's talk a little bit about Saturday. Anyways, what is there to do on a Saturday? Hey, Missoula Public Library always gets popping on Saturdays with a lot of people coming in and out. Uh, but also, if you're interested, uh, the Farmer's Market, it's a little thing that kind of happens in Missoula every once in a while, but uh, pretty much every Saturday, all through the summer, well until October, it is a wonderful resource for a lot of people to get their fresh produce, baked goods, and uh, cured meats. So enjoy that at the Farmer's Market by the Red X's downtown. You can also go to the Clark Fork River Market, which is underneath the bridge, uh, roughly adjacent to it. Uh, you can't miss it. You see a bunch of people walking around, just fall groups of people, and you'll find a Farmer's Market at some point. <laughs> just be downtown. Uh, Mountain Line will also host uh, three uh, three of its amazing race. This is a round two starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And uh, you still have time to compete this race to be entered to win a towny electric bike sponsored by Windfall. Uh, da, 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 da. You can sign up online or you can sign up at the Mountain Line Transit Center. Round two is May 10th. Uh, well actually, wait, May, May 29th. Round three is going to be June 1st. All right, family fun time at the Y. MCA, join us at the YMCA. Uh, whether place play families, uh, children and their families will enjoy bounce houses, tumbling mats, and more. Family fun time is all uh, is between 9:30 and 11:30 a.m. and on Saturdays it's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. through May. Ooh, looks like it's pretty much the last weekend of this. <laughs> it's like through the end of May. Like, okay, there it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, Imagination Brewing Company is having a sax appeal. Brian J will be performing at s from 6 to 8 p.m. The Sundogs is going to be at 10 sco Spoon Winery live music with uh, with the tasting room that's open. It's music at 6 p.m. It's $5 cover for the live music. Um, masks are required. And then Montana Socials Live at Dunrovin Ranch. I did want to uh, hopefully get... Uh, one of the folks who does this, because I know them personally, James Wassum, does a gig, um, and they're going to be doing some live streams from Dunrovin Ranch, and you get to see the horses. It's a really beautiful uh, ranch, and they'll be streaming from 7 to about 4 p.m. Fun field day of live streaming adventures at Dunrovin Ranch in Lobo, Montana. So that about does it for all your events. If you want to learn more, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. In terms of Missoula news, yes, uh, or MCAT news to be more specific, um, we are open here at the public library between 9 and 6 p.m. It is technically over here. I'm taping this. It's already 9.30, and I've already missed the first half an hour of my regular job shift at the host table. So I better get back to that as soon as possible. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And if you want more information, you go to Wake Up Missoula on Facebook and YouTube, and you can find us on MCAT.org.